Today, we're going to be talking about maximizing nonprofit impact with Google Analytics. And it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide presented by TAP Network. I'm excited because I used to know a little about Google Analytics, but there's so much more to learn and everything changes so much. My name is Aretha Simons. If you don't know me already, I'm the webinar producer here at TAP Network. I'm going to show you on the next slide how you can engage. Um, feel free to type your questions in the cap in the chat. I said the cat. Oh, just ignore me. <laughs> type your questions in the chat, but we would love you put them in the Q&A so we can definitely focus on them and maybe answer them at the end. We're going to send the slides and the video replay by later today. When you close this window, there's going to be a survey that pops up. It's just two questions. I would love if you would answer those questions and let TechSoup and TAP Network know what other topics you'd like to hear. Um, turn on the closed caption, just type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. You might look in the more section. I'm going to get ready to turn this over to Julie and Grace and John Hill from TAP Network. They're going to take us further and over to you, John and Julian. Thanks, Aretha. Uh, my name is Julian Grace. I'm the uh, digital solutions manager here at TAP Network. So I handle a lot with analytics and ads, and I, I help folks with their website uh, day in and day out. John? Yep, my name is John Hill, and I'm the web projects manager here at TEP Network, and I work a lot on the back end of the websites with our resources. So I work with our uh, account managers, our developers, our designers, kind of making sure that the project uh, runs smoothly all the way from beginning to end. Um, we're super excited to have you guys here today. So a little bit about us. We are TAP Network, a uh, full-service digital marketing agency that has partnered with TechSoup for over eight years. Uh, over these years, we've provided you know vast amounts of uh, marketing thought leadership and expertise, not only to TechSoup, but to thousands of their members. And we appreciate you guys joining us today and hope to provide you guys with some actionable insights into uh, Google Analytics. And then uh, you guys will get this slide deck uh, after, so I won't go into this too much, but this does show some of the services that we provide from branding to web development to CRM and ongoing support retainers. Like I said, we are a full service uh, digital marketing agency specializing in services designed to help nonprofits grow. Um, so yeah, with that, I will hand it over to Julian to get this webinar rolling. Thanks. So just a quick overview of, of what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to talk about Google Analytics as an entire platform, sort of uh, uh, what it can do, what it can't, some stuff in there. We're going to dig into a little bit about how to measure a website traffic, what that means, how to look into it. And then we're going to take a look at how to measure what's happening on your website. So how users are interacting with it, how you can sort of use that to help map organizational goals. And then we're going to dig into a little bit about practical applications. So some scenarios, and then going into a, a demo account and sort of very quickly showing you around just a little bit. We'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, if there's something uh, that sort of comes up as I'm speaking, feel free to put it in the Q&A. John or I will sort of uh, answer it as we go, or we'll save it towards the end. Um, but rest assured, we're going to do our best to get to all the questions in the Q&A, maybe even some in the chat as well. Now, when we look at Google Analytics, this is a free tool it's by Google that really helps nonprofits and you know organizations of any type measure and analyze everything that's going on on their website. So that can be really important because it's easy to tread water when you're trying to do digital marketing and you know, you're spending all this time and effort, but you're not really going anywhere. By understanding what's happening on your website, how it's being used, you can make better decisions as you go forward to see like, hey, these are things we should change. These are things that are working really well for us. Let's spend you know, uh, more time investing in this. These data-driven decisions help make things far more effective and efficient as you go along. Now, um, really quick with all this, um, just put in the chat uh, with, the, with the letter, which one of these goals is, is the most important for the organization? Let's see what people say. Seeing some A's, trying to raise awareness. We got some donations in there too. Yeah, we're getting a, a, a little bit from, from the entire spectrum here. So one of the things that Google Analytics is going to do is help you measure some of this stuff and, and allow you to see what's working, what's not, um, and, and spend your time very, very efficiently. Now, 
what exactly happens when you install Google Analytics on your site? And I'm just going to pause here. Uh, Joe asks, does Google Analytics work with Wix websites? It does. It works with um, almost any kind of website. Basically, everybody here, your website is going to work uh, very well. It's a very platform agnostic. Uh, when you install Google Analytics, you're going to be able to see conversion rate data, um, how some of your specific links are doing, how you know people are downloading files or interacting with your forms. It's a whole suite. So it collects all this data for you and then gives you ways to interact with that data to create reports and, and gain insights from there. I'm going to go over just a quick you know, overview of some key definitions and, and, and how to install Google Analytics itself. So when you're trying to get started, there are two main areas that you want to pay attention to. The first is the technical side, where you're going to be setting things up and hooking it up to your website. The second is the strategic side. So that's where you're saying, hey, what exactly are we trying to get information on? What's going to be the most valuable to us? Having that you know, ready to go as you're doing the technical setup can make things uh, uh, go very, very smoothly. So when you're setting up Google Analytics, there's just going to be a tag and a piece of code that you put on your site. Most major website platforms like uh, Google, uh, WordPress has Google Site Kit, Wix, and Squarespace have integrations where you just sort of insert measurement IDs. It takes care of a lot of the setup for you. So you'll just be able to add that tag to your website, and all your data is going to flow right through a data stream. We'll talk about data streams in just a little bit. Then make sure that you're getting together with the rest of your strategic team and saying, hey, these are things we want to track uh, You know, the form submissions on these events, or how many people are clicking our donate button. All these things, having that, that ready to go is going to be very, very helpful. Now, I mentioned data streams. Um, some folks, you know, if it's been a while since you've been interacting with uh, Google Analytics, you may be feel familiar with Universal Analytics. That was uh, the old way, uh, the old version of Google Analytics, Google Analytics 3, if you'd like. Um, that stopped collecting data last year. And uh, this summer, it deleted all that data. So if the last time you looked at Google Analytics, you're using uh, uh, Universal Analytics, uh, you're not going to have any information uh, when you're in there right now. So with this, um, uh, Google Analytics 4 is what you want to be on. Um, it's going to be very, very similar to Universal Analytics, but there's some major changes that you, that you want to uh, take a look at. One of the major ones is data streams. So with data streams, that's just a connection from a website or an app into uh, your Google Analytics property. So you're going to be able to hook up multiple websites or a website and an app. Maybe you have your donation platform on a subdomain somewhere. It's a separate site. Or maybe all your event registrations happen somewhere else. You'll be able to set up data streams to collect information from all those areas and combine them into your uh, Google Analytics dashboard and get insights into all of that together, rather than having a separate account for your website and another one for your event manager and another one for your donations and, and anything else like this. It really helps organize things and keeps things very, very streamlined. So it makes things um, uh, uh, much simpler to integrate. So you're not going to have to do all those uh, you know, multiple connections. It also gives you a lot of control over what you want. So when we take a look at some of these data streams, you might say, hey, for this, I only want to click page views on you know, maybe this site. But on this site, I want to get all my file downloads and the form submissions. Or maybe your e-commerce platform you know, only lets you get certain bits of information. Be able to customize all your data streams just for that. Now, the main building block here in Google Analytics 4 is the event. So everything's an event. A page view is an event. A, a click's a, an event. A, a scroll is an event. Um, so when we talk about events in this, just think of this as, as a, a metric of some kind that you're going to go in here. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more about what sort of events are automatically generated, um, uh, what's going to look, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by a question, uh, what's going to look at you know, uh, across the website. But just know that events are the core thing uh, in Google Analytics 4. And so you'll be able to create custom events, do a lot of interesting stuff with it. But it's, it's very much oriented around a page view event, uh, a scroll event, a click event, a download event, stuff like this. Um, Joe asks, does Google Analytics 4 work with Facebook and Instagram? In a very roundabout way, it does. I think you're going to get a, a little more insight as we go along to see how that integrates with um, you know, external platforms. But just know that this is mainly a, a website tool. You'll be able to get data from some of these other places, but this is collecting uh, information on how your website is, is functioning and performing. So we're going to jump into a couple of things here, just to, to get into the basics. We're going to take a look at traffic. 
which is you know how people are, are getting to the site, where they're going. We're gonna look at user behavior. So what they're doing when they're on the site, are they downloading things? Are they clicking on things? Or what are they looking at? And then uh, a little bit into conversions. And those are basically identifying the most important things on the website. How can we add a, a, a ticker to that to basically see how many people have clicked on XYZ? How many people have viewed this page? So John, why don't you take us through traffic a little bit? Sure, sounds good. So like Julian said, traffic is the people coming to your site. Uh, and think of GA4 as kind of like the traffic camera that helps you understand who is coming and going. Uh, it helps you see where people are coming from. Are they finding you through search engines like Google or Bing? Are they being referred by other websites? Are they coming directly to your site? Uh, you can also track what pages they're visiting. Are they landing on your homepage and then exploring other pages? Are they going straight to your donation page, et cetera? Um, and you can see how long they're staying. So people spend, so are people spending, you know, just a few seconds on each page? Are they spending a couple minutes on your site? Uh, when you understand all of this traffic data, you can then make better informed decisions to improve your, your site overall. So for instance, if you notice a lot of people are landing on your homepage, but then leaving, you might want to make it more engaging. Or if you see that people are spending um, a lot of time on your donations page, maybe you could consider adding more donation options. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll kind of dive a little bit more into all of this. So we've got sessions and page views. Think of a session as a visit to your website or you know uh, an entire visit to your house, let's say. Uh, a session starts when the user lands on your site and ends when they've been inactive for 30 minutes or they leave or at midnight. Um, now page views are like the rooms they visit in your house. Each page they stop at is a page view. So if someone visits your homepage and then goes to your about page and then your donation page, that's three page views in one session. So sessions tell you how many people are coming to your site and while uh, page views are more or less shows you what they're kind of interested in. So now we're gonna go over a little bit what it looks like inside Google Analytics. So Julian's going to be going over a live demo of some of this later, um, but this section is pretty important for understanding how users interact with your website. Uh, the top two graphs display kind of, you know, your most visited pages in different ways. And then down below is more detail. So from left to right, uh, we've got the top pages or screens. This shows you, you know, your most visited pages on your site, a great way to know what is popular. And uh, for this example, we'll follow the second line backslash basket HTML was the example. Um, then the next column, we've got views, page views. This tells you how many times uh, each page has been viewed. And then we've got users. This indicates how many unique users have viewed each page, in this case, 5,576. Um, and then we've got views per user. This calculates the average number of times a user views the page with a 3.40. It looks like people are returning back to this page, right? Uh, and then we've got average engagement time. This measures the average amount of time users spend on the page. And then the event count, this shows the total number of events, or like Julian said, the clicks, the scrolls, the form submissions that occurred on this page. And then we've got the conversions, and this indicates the number of uh, conversions that took place on the page. A conversion is a predefined action that you want the user to take such as making a purchase or signing up for a newsletter, uh, which we're at 38,500 on this. Uh, and then afterwards, at the very end, we've got total revenue, which shows the total revenue generated from the page. Uh, this is only relevant if you do have uh, set up e-commerce tracking in G4 also. Um, so by going through all that kind of stuff, you can identify you know, what people are looking at, what's the most engaging. And then up here, we've got exploration paths. Um, this is a powerful tool that allows you to dive deep into your data and provides you a flexible way to analyze that data and visualize it in various different ways. Here we have the example, which is a path exploration, which helps you visualize the user's journey that they take on your website. So this can be extremely helpful for understanding how users navigate through your site and identifying those potential pain points or opportunities for improvement. So if we look on the left-hand side, you'll see a lot of different ways to explore the variables of traffic from your site. And then on the right, it shows you the steps of events through that. So here we're seeing how people are landing on your site and the pages they view. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna go much deeper into it here, but uh, Julian will show this off a little bit later in the demo. All right, so let's talk about the different ways people can find your site. 
And there are four main types of traffic. First, we've got direct traffic. These are the people who know your site well. You know, they just type in the URL. They know who you are and they usually come back. Then we've got organic traffic. These can be people who you find through a search engine like uh, that finds you through a search engine like Google. Um, they typed in a keyword related to your nonprofit maybe, and then your website popped up. And then we've got referral traffic. These are people who came to your website through another website. So, you know, they clicked on a link from a different site and then was brought over to yours. And we've got paid traffic. These are people who found you through an ad you paid for. So like running a targeted ad campaign to attract new eyes to your site. Uh, all pretty straightforward. And then up next, we're going to talk about how to apply uh, all that information into digital marketing. So now we've kind of understand the different types of traffic. Let's kind of go into how we can actually improve our digital marketing with all of this. And there's a few things to consider. One, are your CTAs driving traffic to the right places when somebody clicks on a call to action or a CTA, um, where does it take them? Is it taking them to that page that you want them to see? Uh, are there broken links or configuration errors? You know, um, is your website leading people to a dead end? You want to check for those 404 error pages and fix any of those broken links? Uh, is your copywriting working? You know, are you are your emails and social posts getting people excited, but um, they're not actually visiting your website? Uh, your copy might need a little bit of a refresh. Um, same thing goes then for like landing page optimization, uh, making sure your landing pages are optimized and relevant uh, to your site. Um, otherwise, you might be losing some of those visitors. And then also just making sure that your device, that your website is optimized for different devices. This is another thing that might uh, make people leave. If your website's not uh, looking great on mobile, um, that may cause people to leave early. Now, before I jump into user behavior, I do have a couple of questions we're going to just uh, um, hit now. So Pat asks that, you know, uh, Universal Analytics has been eliminated by Google. If you want to compare year to year, does that mean the older information is gone? Unfortunately, it does. Um, they had sent out, you know, a bunch of uh, emails as they were getting ready to delete the data, but they sort of blend in with a lot of the other ones. So it might have been, you know, easy to miss. Um, but that information is sort of out of the platform anymore. One of the things is that, you know, because Universal Analytics is so different from uh, GA4, you can't really sort of import all that information directly into the new platform. They are very separate. And so if you don't have a copy of that data, that is gone. Um, hopefully at this point, you have at least a year of, of Google Analytics 4 data. If not, you're going to be starting from scratch, and this isn't necessarily going to be relevant to you. But um, that data, unfortunately, is no longer accessible. Somebody else asks that they're having trouble collecting gender and age data on, on the site. Now, the biggest uh, sort of cohort you're going to see in demographics like that is not set. So you may see a graph where you're saying, oh, well, you know, I have um, uh, uh, you know, 30 percent uh, men, 40 percent women. Um, what does that leave us with? Uh, and then 30 percent, you know, not specified here. You're saying, OK, well, that's sort of the um, uh, the general gender breakdown of the users on the site. But if you dig down, you'll see that maybe, you know, out of all those metrics, you'll have a hundred users accounting for all that. And then you have thousands and thousands of users where they're like, we don't have any data information on this. So Google Analytics isn't necessarily a great demographic collecting tool. It will give you some information if sure they have it available and they'll do sort of their best guess. But for the most part, most part, I would not rely on this to collect that sort of information um, from your site. So we're going to talk a little bit about user behavior now. So with this, we're really trying to figure out, now that we know, you know what, what pages are working well, how people are getting there, what's happening when they're actually on those pages? What can we sort of identify? What information is going to be available to us? So here we have the return of the events. So they're very important. It's going to give you all sort of the information that you need. So it's really important to make sure that you have your analytics account set up properly so you're getting this right sort of information. One of the big things I like to call out is if you're setting it up yourself, um, make sure that uh, you have enhanced measurement turned on. I'll show you that a little bit, but if you don't have that turned on, you're just getting page views. You're getting the sort of the most basic stuff you have here. Um, beyond that, you know, if you have enhanced measurement turned on, you're going to start getting file downloads when people start a form but don't submit it, and then they have form submissions. Lots of interesting stuff uh, goes on in there. Now, there's a couple of different kinds of events. So there are some 
automatic events where you don't really need to do anything. Those are like, as long as you have enhanced measurement turned on, your views and your scrolls and your outbound clicks and when people play a video, stuff like this. Then depending on when you're setting up the account, what you choose and sort of what sort of connections you have, you can start to get e-commerce stuff, you know, uh, set in there. So when people are viewing your store, viewing a specific item, when they click to add something to the cart, that's brought in there. You can also set up custom events. So if you see like, hey, well, I'm calling out to my donate page, you know, maybe three times on, on the homepage. I want to see, you know, not just if they're getting to the donate page from the homepage, but which one is really driving the most traffic? Is it the call to action? Is it the thing in the footer? Is it in the header? You can create a custom event to sort of say, hey, when somebody clicks on the thing on the call to action, you know, this is going to be a CTA donation homepage event. You'll be able to create that and then start collecting data on that. And then you have these enhanced measurement uh, events, like I mentioned before. Now, as you're collecting all these events, another thing that can be really helpful when you're looking at user behavior is the bounce rate and the exit rate. Now, there's you know some text here that you can sort of read, but on a very basic level, the bounce rate is when somebody comes to your website, they view something, and then they're like, great, they didn't you know complete any actions, they just leave right away. Uh, the exit rate is saying, hey, they've been browsing a whole bunch of pages, What's the page that people tend to, to uh, uh, leave on the most? So it might be sort of your, your thank you page after they complete a donation. They're like, great, my time here is done. You might expect to have an, a high exit rate there. Maybe you want to get them after they've made that donation to further engage with the content. You can see like, hey, this page has a really high exit rate. How can we keep people you know, on this page so that uh, you know maybe they uh, sign up for our newsletter, do something like this. So those two are, while they're very similar, uh, just know that exit rate is um, marked whenever somebody leaves and the and a bounce is marked when somebody just lands on that page and then leaves right from that page as well. Now, um, we've been talking about conversions here. I find that's the more uh, you know applicable term. Just note that in Google Analytics, conversions are now called key events. Keeping with you know making everything in Google Analytics for about events, they're like, well, conversions, I'm not sure if that quite makes sense. Um, some of the documentation on Google still might reference conversions, uh, but it's just a special type of event. And I think that sort of name change can be really helpful when you're trying to parse all the stuff you're seeing in Google Analytics, being able to see like, hey, all these are events, but these are the really important ones. These are the ones we want to look at. So they are called key events. And you're going to want to go through, and that's where the strategic information that you planned out when you're doing the technical setup comes from, saying these are the important things you want to take a look at. Let's mark these as conversions. So if somebody fills out this specific form, that's going to count as a conversion. Maybe somebody just views um, the Our Impact page. You'll be able to see like, hey, we really want to share this. Maybe you're running an awareness campaign. Uh, a, a page view can easily be a conversion. Whatever it is, you'll be able to create an event and just mark it as a key event. And then broadly, you're going to be talking about it with other tools and you know, in the rest of your digital marketing work, um, you're going to refer to that as a conversion. And we're just going to pause here. We know we've sort of thrown a lot of information at you, and we're sort of making sure that we're, we're going through stuff to give you a pretty wide overview and not going too deep. Um, so it can seem kind of complex. But just know that all this complexity is directly tied to how useful this tool is to help you gain insights into your website, your content, and all your digital marketing efforts. This isn't something you're going to pick up in five minutes and be you know a complete expert on, but it is very manageable. So as you learn, you'll find new uh, and, and more advanced uses for it. Um, and if you, if you only ever stay where you're monitoring a few events in your page views, that's fine. And if you want to go deeper, uh, Google Analytics provides uh, that capability for you. Now, here we're going to jump into a couple use cases. So we're going to look at measuring fundraising campaigns and tracking some marketing campaigns. Before we do, there's one thing I want to mention. Uh, you know, if you're subscribed to our newsletter here, you'll, you'll see something like this in your inbox but UTM parameters, this is really, really helpful. So say you're sending a link out. Maybe you're, you're running a donations campaign. So you have an email, a couple of social posts, maybe a, a flyer with a QR code that all link to your donation page. And you're like, wonderful, we, we have all this out here. Let's see how it's doing. You then go into your Google Analytics and you're seeing how many views does my um, uh, donations page have? And hopefully that has an increased number. But you're not really able to see where people are coming from or you know which post was it that sort of generated you know this user converting. This is where UTM parameters come into play. 
So this is basically extra information you can set on your links that tells Google Analytics exactly where they came from. So you can mark things. I have them listed here, the four main ones that you're going to use to say, hey, this is going to be our Giving Tuesday campaign, you know, the campaign item down here. Um, the medium might be, this is going to be coming from our email newsletter. The source you might fill out with a September 18th newsletter. And then the content here, this might allow you to just sort of provide additional sort of context or information in there. But the source, the medium, and campaign, you'll be able to set all those. And then when you look into Google Analytics, you'll be able to see, okay, here's all the data. I only want to see information, the sessions, and the user behavior that's tagged with our Giving Tuesday campaign. You can click on that, and all of a sudden, everything filters down, and you're able to just see how that campaign works. Then you're saying, I just want to see how the September 18th newsletter did. What sort of events were driven you know, from sessions tagged with that information? It allows you to dig down um, uh, quite deeply. And so say you have multiple flyers with QR codes. You know, Before, that might just be, hey, it's marked as direct. So they went directly to your site. Now you can see this flyer that we put you know, on this community board for folks. This is generating you know, a lot of views. Maybe we reach out to them and, and set up a, you know, partner events. Or, hey, this thing that we've been putting in our emails, uh, you know, nobody's clicking on it down there. Maybe we need to call this out, change up the design a little bit. This extra information is just one of the ways that Google Analytics gives you that sort of extra insight into what's happening, what's working, and what's not. So, John, uh, why don't you take us through, uh, you know, this this example right here? Sure. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how to measure the success of fundraising campaigns um, using GA4. So first up, you want to make sure that you are uh, you set up your events. You want to make sure that your you know, donation landing pages and forms are tracking the right events. Uh, this will help ensure that the conversion, uh, this will help you measure the conversions, excuse me, um, and see how many people are taking the action. I'm going to get your reports ready, of course. Um, prepare your reports so they can uh, track easily all the different uh, performance that you are uh, doing on your campaign. This will help you stay on top of your results uh, and make informed decisions moving forward. You want to make sure you tag your materials. Use the UTMs that parameters that Julian just talked about to track where your uh, traffic is coming from. This will help you see which marketing channels are driving efforts the most. Uh, you want to use data to optimize the landing pages. So analyze your landing page data to see if there are any areas where you can improve. For example, if people are scrolling past your donation button, you might want to make it more prominent. Um, so having all this set up Right will help you understand you know your donors' behaviors better. This can help you tailor your fundraising efforts to their needs and preferences moving forward better. Uh, and next, we'll kind of go into the marketing campaigns. So when it comes to tracking marketing campaigns, consistency is of course key. Using consistent tagging, you want to make sure that you use the same campaign name across all of your marketing materials. This helps you get a clear picture of how each uh, campaign is performing. Then you want to set up a funnel report, create a funnel report in analytics to visualize the user's journey from start to finish. This will help you identify any of those bottleneck areas where people are dropping off. Uh, and then, you know, tag your CTAs as conversions. Make sure that analytics knows what actions you want people to take. This will help you measure the success of your campaigns. And you want to be regularly reviewing your campaign data to see what's working and what's not. This is uh, going to help you optimize your future campaigns and achieve even better results. So I'll hand it back over to Julian and where he's got a cool demo to uh, show us all this about. So take it away. Thanks. So we're going to go a little bit into the platform. So you're going to see a lot. And the goal for me here is to show you just some things that you might do you know, during your day-to-day -day stuff, some of the setup things. This isn't going to be a comprehensive training, and you're not going to get all the answers now. But I do think it's going to be helpful to see exactly what this looks like, rather than some screenshots and us talking about it. Um, now, as I'm going through this, there are a couple questions that have been hanging out here. This is a, a Google demo account. So this is one they provide for you to go in and play around. Um, Alex asks, how do you ignore admin sessions from analytics? That is something you're able to do. There could be filters in the administration uh, area. Just look at some of the, the data collection and some of the filtering uh, options there. Uh, that's going to allow you to say, hey, don't track any information that I'm doing. I'm hitting all these pages. I'm updating them all the time. I don't want that to sort of affect any of the things, um, uh, any of the metrics that we're tracking and all of our, our key events and things like this. Um, somebody asks, you demonstrate creating an event? I'll show you where we can create events and, and do some of that here. We're not going to get into the, the nitty gritty of that because 
Custom events are a little more of an advanced topic just because things aren't pre-configured for you, but we'll, we'll definitely hit that as we go. So when you first log into Google Analytics, you're gonna see you know, a, a dashboard like this. So it's gonna give you a pretty nice overview of some things. You'll be able to see what countries people are in here. The, here are some of the, you know, uh, the session information that we mentioned before. Here's some paid search stuff. Here's direct in here. It's gonna give you how many users are coming in, monitoring your key events. And it's to a certain degree, you can come in here and really start customizing this as you'd like, but it's not gonna give you a lot of information. For this, we're gonna to go to this left-hand sidebar and go into these areas. And before we do, I'm gonna show you quickly around the administration section. So this is where you're gonna spend a lot of time when you're setting things up. Um, here you can see you're gonna be able to add people to the account or the property for stuff like this. This data streams area, this is how you're gonna connect things to your site. So here in this example, we can see that they have a data stream set up here and it's set up for their uh, website. And they have all the stuff like the measurement ID. This is what you're gonna copy here for you know, putting it into Wix or, or Squarespace. They just say, hey, paste your ID. If you're on WordPress, uh, Google Site Kit will walk you through everything. This is the enhanced measurement. This is what you, know, you really wanna make sure it's turned on. Because this is a demo account, they don't let me sort of go into the settings here um, and, and, and touch things too much, but just know that here you'll be able to turn on the, all those extra events. This is the custom events area. So here you can see the data stream. We'll be able to uh, create them. Again, because this is a demo account, I won't be able to sort of walk you through everything, but this is just one of the places that you can use to create events. And then say you're doing things very manually. You have a, like a super custom site, maybe you're using a lot of code for it. Uh, this just gives you the code that you paste in your header and you are, are good to go. Uh, a rule of thumb here is if this thing says green up here, you're usually gonna be good to go. Otherwise, you're gonna see you know, specific guidance for what to do um, here. You're able to see like uh, all the domains that this is gonna measure on. So here we're seeing you know, different domains that this is uh, mapped to. Again, this is a little more advanced stuff, but just so you know that once you start digging into this, um, you'll sort of have screens that will sort of organize um, all the places that you can uh, look at and go. So I see, you know, Catherine is, is asking about excluding internal traffic again here. And so this is, you know, something that we have right here. So we have, again, we are in the admin section, data collection and modification and data filters. So here's just a couple options. I can't dig in too deep because Google is not, they're not gonna let anybody just come in and mess up their, their own demo account, but you're able to sort of uh, uh, map things um, here in that area. I should just mark this as answered here. And also know that you can do things like if you're using uh, Google Ads, side note, Google's, uh, I mean, nonprofits through uh, Google, get $10,000 a month in free Google advertising. So definitely take advantage of that. Sign up through Google for nonprofits. Um, you're gonna be able to link a lot, of, a lot of that information directly into analytics. So you have your ad stuff here. If you're using any of these, uh, you know, Search Console can be a really helpful one. You know, for some folks who have watched some of the other webinars, you've heard us talk about Search Console. That's your direct connection to Google Search to see, hey, what are what are people searching that I'm showing up for? Are there any indexing issues on my site? You know, what's the page speed look like? How can I submit my site map? Search Console is the answer to all of that. Definitely take a look if you haven't uh, done before. Uh, Dia Art Foundation asks, how is a stream different from a property within a single account? So a property will contain streams. Um, just go back to data streams, or actually whole admin as, as a section. So um, you have an account, and then you might have multiple properties in that account. So you might say, hey, you know, I work on a lot of stuff. We Maybe I'm, I'm involved in a couple of different organizations. You can have a property for all of them in the same account. And then the data stream, you set one of these up, and you only need one, but you can have multiple inside of that property. So that data stream is saying, hey, for all the information that's gonna be organized into this one Google Analytics property, where I log in and view all the page views and all the event data, all that information, um, this is the connection that's gonna hook up these sites to that property. Let me back out of here. So there's a lot more you can sort of see to go in here um, through uh, Google Analytics. You can start you know, filtering out 
um, uh, data collection, what you uh, collect and what you don't. Um, one thing that can be helpful uh, to turn on is if in, in the same data collection area, data retention, by default, these are going to be set to two months. You basically have two options. You have two months and 14 months. Swapping these to 14 months can be really helpful, especially if you do a lot of annual reporting and you want some granular data on an annual level. Hey, if you if you have it set to two months, you're going to lose out on some context uh, over time. So definitely make sure that for event data and user data, uh, you have these set to 14 months. But then say you know you're a very privacy focused organization and you don't want to collect a lot of stuff. You have the ability to to turn off a lot of information, set sessions to end when browsers uh, uh, close. A lot of a lot of stuff can be customized in here. We're not going to get into it too much because I want to show you some of the more reporting information. But just know that there's there's a lot to dig into in this admin section. Now, I'm clicking here on the sidebar into reports, and so here we're going to see a couple different screens. So much like the dashboard, you're going to have another little reporting dashboard here that you can select your time frame up in this area. Maybe you want to start comparing this to the previous 30 days um, or, or other cohorts you have. You'll be able to do that. Then you have this real-time dashboard. So this can be helpful if you just want to have something up and maybe you have a, a marketing office and you just want to see, hey, what's going on in, in this moment? This is going to give you uh, an overview of what exactly is happening at this moment. We can see in whatever site this is hooked up to that there are 13 active users in the last five minutes. That's good to know. Here you're going to be able to see, hey, what's this source? Remember the UTM, those custom sources we set? There's some default ones, but then here somebody put in one as the source's newsletter for August 2024. Wow, this newsletter we send out, we can see hey, people are coming from it. You can filter down on that or just keep it here as a good sort of intro for things. Now, when John and I talked about you know, tracking information, we broke it down into uh, traffic and user behavior. And those sort of broadly match to acquisition and engagement. So when we talk about acquisition, this is where we're going to start looking at those things like uh, the UTM tags and, and all the other information. So Robbie, you mentioned how do you view or filter these campaign tags? This is going to be the area we're, we're really looking at. So uh, we're, again, they love these dashboards. You're going to have a couple dashboards like this as you go all the way down. Say we want to look at this traffic acquisition here. Here's we're set here, and let me just say got it to these folks here. Say we want to look at the campaigns. So we come down this drop down. We say, hey, let's look at all the campaigns that we have here. Maybe we want to view 25 in this table that we have. And we don't want these to be up there, but maybe we want to check these. OK, now we're able to sort of like change this, this chart and see exactly what's, what's popping up in this area. But now we have a list of all the sessions that are tagged with a campaign. Here we still have a good amount that don't have a campaign tied to it. These things here, hey, this is mapped as direct automatically, referral ones automatically. But then we have all these other campaign names. Um, and you know, these are a little, a little messy looking because this is a demo account and people are sort of connecting stuff to it as they do. Um, but you're able to filter that out. Maybe you want to look at, hey, we put a lot of stuff here in uh, the source or the medium. There's a combined metric here called the source and the medium. So that sort of combines the two. And if you want to dig down to just the source here, here we can see that there's, you know, uh, uh, this website has been sending uh, some information to this. We have perksatwork.com. This is where some of this traffic organized. You're able to, to fill out all those UTM fields and it pops right in here. I'll show you how to dig down a little bit deeper to create you know, more advanced configurations later on. But just know that as you're sort of dealing with um, uh, uh, figuring out information around your traffic, this acquisition area is going to be where you want. So uh, traffic acquisition probably looks at sessions. And then remember how we had that you know a user can have multiple sessions? This is just saying, hey, for all the sessions that this user has, before that cookie expires and they get set back to a new user, now what was the first one they clicked? On? What do we really get them with uh, first? Now, if we look at engagement, we're no longer looking at how people get to the site, but what are people doing on the site? So again, another dashboard, love the dashboards. We have things like events here. So here's a list of all your events and we can see page view. We would expect that to be the highest because before they do other events, they need to Look at one of the page views, uh, one of the pages here, and we have this view item list. 
So this is an automatically generated one that's just saying like, hey, this is an event they did. They viewed a list of all of our items here on an archive page. Because this is an e-commerce example for this demo account, this we can expect this to be pretty high. If we just sort of increase this to get some more things in here, you can see some of the other events that they've, they've had. They have add to cart here. Somebody chose a promotion. Um, here, San Francisco users. Maybe you really want to find out how, you know, if you're dealing with, you know, multiple boroughs in a certain area and you want to see, um, you know, uh, which borough, to the best of Google's knowledge, uh, you know, that they're clicking on or you, you set up flyers in certain areas, be able to create special events just like that. In the pages and screens area, here's where you're able to see a lot of the stuff for your top performing pages. So here we're, we're seeing like, hey, this is our homepage. And just like John went over, we have all this information down here. There's more filtering that you can do uh, down here. And we see, hey, we just want to see the event count for the add to cart option. So this is a product page. We have a lot of add to cart things in here. We don't have them on the homepage because there's nothing to add to the cart on the homepage. So just know you'll be able to see a lot of things that may be like, hey, why is this, isn't this showing any data? It's because things aren't mapped that way. And there's just none of that type of information to be collected. We also have some things down here in the monetization and retention area that is good to look at once you've sort of gotten a handle on the basics for some of the stuff here. Um, but just want to quickly go over this user area. Just skip over Search Console. Here we can see this is what I was mentioning with the genders. We see, okay, there's 59 and 40%. We're filtering in on these things. When we look at this, okay, we have 10,000, 15,000 here, but unknown, we have almost 50,000. So that's why you know a tool like this isn't great to sort of collect that information. Um, the the biggest cohort you're going to have is this. We have no idea. There's nothing we can do for you here. So that's just important to know. This user area is more helpful for things like, hey, what kind of phone um, are people using here? What kind of browser? You can sort of drop this down. What's the screen resolution that people are having? Maybe if you're seeing that a lot of people are using your your site on tiny tiny phones. Maybe you're, you're catering to a specific audience. You can say, hey, let's make sure that the, our site functions well on this. It seems like people are really getting a lot of use from this, and we're, we're going to be able to help them make sure that the site works well on that sort of screen resolution. Maybe you even want to see sort of like what, what platform it's on. So here, this is just sort of web, so uh, not too much information there. But more so than the demographic details, you're going to get more information down here from uh, the tech. That being said, you will have things where you can uh, just go to this overview area, start tracking by country or city. You're not going to get like the house number or anything or anybody's you know, individual email or their IP address or anything like that. This is just all sort of anonymized and aggregated together. Now, I'm going to quickly mention some of these explorations. So just know that explorations are custom reports. All the stuff we saw in the report section can be brought here into an exploration and messed around with. You can say, hey, I now want to see how, just these five events. These are going to be the important ones. I want to create a report just for that. Or I want to only view pages that you know uh, are, are part of the blog. You can create a report that just focuses on that information. Now, in order to save time for questions, I'm just going to show you uh, one of the things that uh, John mentioned earlier, which is this path exploration option. So this can be really helpful if we just click Start Over. We're going to have two options. We can select a starting point or an ending point. So let's say we choose the starting point. We're going to choose the page title. And we're going to choose the home page. So now we said, hey, we're going to start on our home page. Where do people go from there? So here we see that, hey, a big portion of people aren't going anywhere after the home page. But we have, you know, uh, 2,100 people going to this, uh, the men's and unisex section of the site. And maybe 706 people went to the fun and games option. So let's click on this one here. It's going to add another step. And you're going to see now that they're on the uh, men's and unisex page, where do they go from there? You can see a good portion of them went back to the home page. That might be an uh, indication to say, hey, you know, a lot of people are just you know going right back from this. Do we need to include a call to action? Do we need to include other page links or information on this page to make it more engaging? And you can continue to sort of chase this down um, and, and go through here. Just know that this is a great interactive tool, but exporting this is going to be really hard. You know, you're going to have a lot of these 15 more as these things are cut off. I wouldn't use it to create things for maybe your annual report, but it can be really helpful.
really quickly, if we just go over to the ending point, we can see uh, the sale page is set up. You might want to look at how people get to the sale page. So this is just working in the opposite direction. So you can see, hey, 1,500 people got here, you know, uh, direct. 1,200 people got here from the home page. Where were they before the home page? Oh, they were on the sale page again. So maybe there's a loop here. 44 people came from the men slash unisex page. But these are just some of the insights you can generate by sort of playing around with all this data that is collected. Know that you can't delete any data while you're doing these explorations. It's just like a visualization tool. Now, the custom reports, these explorations, are what I consider to be the most involved and complex parts of, of Google Analytics. So it's going to take you a while to sort of develop some of these. But as you're messing around in just the general report section, you're going to start to get an instinct for, hey, it would be really helpful to know this information. How can I get this you know, uh, uh, more accurate or, or more detailed in this one specific area? That will then drive you to this explorations page and sort of you'll, you'll have a good idea for where to start. One thing to know is that it's going to let you do whatever you want in this, even if it doesn't make sense. So if you want to create a chart that has an event name on the x-axis and you know a, a country on the top one and you're tracking page views as a metric, it's not going to show you any data, but it'll let you put all those things in that area and build a chart that doesn't show anything. Uh, if, if you're creating just another one, uh, uh, just an example here, um, you'll be able to you know, create uh, different types of charts. So you have your line charts, your scatter plots, some donut charts, a really helpful tool. Those charts do tend to be a little bit better for if you're trying to export them. But one of the things they love to do is use this slightly different shades of blue. So they really are meant to click. If you were to print that out, you'd see like, hey, here's a color chart. And it looks like all the same color blue that it, you know, just maybe slightly off. How do I know which one is mapped to this? So again, this is really helpful to interact with not so much to export. So that's just a quick overview inside of the platform. Um, some some key takeaways here. John, you wanna try and wrap it up here for us? Yeah, yeah sounds good. So just some key takeaways from today's uh, webinar. As you guys have seen, um, G4A is a really powerful digital marketing tool. It's a free tool that uh, allows you to dive deep into how people are interacting with your website and all of your digital marketing materials. You know, data-driven decisions are always the best way to go. So by using GA4, you can make more informed decisions that will improve the effectiveness of all your digital marketing efforts, not just on your website. Um, and as I'm sure you guys have seen, J4 is both simple and powerful. You can kind of get you know that basic information at a glance, but it's also capable of complex reporting. Uh, you know, the more you dive into it, the more you're going to uncover. Um, all that we've gone over today is a great way to kind of start driving more people to your digital marketing efforts and growing your nonprofits. Um, now I'll toss it back over to Julian, who's going to go over some of our analytic offers that we have uh, through TechSoup, um, and then we'll do a QA. Julian? Yeah. So, you know, we're not just going to mention this and leave it hanging to uh, you know figure out the rest yourself. Um, you know, we are, you know, partnered with TechSoup here. You can find a lot of the stuff we do uh, by going to the TechSoup website and the website services and digital marketing area right there. Some quick products we have is, you know, we do have a package. If you're just getting started and need some help, this is a great place to sort of uh, start interacting with us. We can help you get things set up, um, start collecting some of those major events, build some reports for you. And also give you a little one-on-one -on -one time in the actual platform to show you, here's how you do things, make sure that things are, are you know, functioning correctly for you. For ongoing support, say, hey, you need some, you know, additional landing page uh, development help, or you need to fix a certain technical issue on your site that's preventing things from working correctly. We do have website maintenance packages as well. Um, we have some uh, digital marketing ones for copywriting, support writing emails, things like that. We are offering a free consultation for TechSoup members. Uh, once you get these slides in your email, uh, you, know, you can click on that and that will sort of walk you through everything to get started. And John, why don't you tell them about the survey? Yeah, sure. So here, if any of you have any interest in AI, specifically in ChatGPT at your nonprofit for things like content writing or social, et cetera, uh, we have this brief survey that you can take about what a, uh, AI you might already be using now and what you'd like to be able to use it for coming up in the future. Uh, this is, will help us create further services to provide um, for everyone. 
Um, when you complete it, you'll get this uh, free ebook that we've created that has some great chat prompts uh, to kickstart using ChatGPT. Check it out. So we have some time set aside for questions. Um, to start off with, we have a couple in the in the bank here. Uh, Lori says, great intro, but it's pretty overwhelming for a small nonprofit with just a couple staff. There's something basic or automatic for us, any uh, training or weekly demos. Um, so there's going to be a lot of resources online for you. You know, Google Analytics is probably, I can't say this for certain, but I would imagine the most popular analytics platform, especially for, you know, nonprofits coming in here. It's free. It allows you to do a lot of things here. Just know that when you get started, there's usually going to be a wizard. So say you have a WordPress site and you install a Google Site Kit. It'll walk you step by step for naming things, connecting it to the site, and then just getting the data in there. The main important, the main, I guess, thing you want to take a look at right away is connecting it to your site, so you have all the information uh, ready to go when you're ready to start digging into the reporting. So you can't just sort of install Google Analytics and then five minutes later go in and see all this helpful information. It needs to be collected and it needs time to sort of uh, uh, map and see its effect. Um, so also know that, you know, if you're doing it on, you know, Squarespace or Rich or something like that, they'll also usually have a nice uh, wizard for you to, to go through. Um, uh, Joe asks, can uh, analytics, uh, Google Analytics 4 be used as a marketing tool? I think so. I think so. We've, we've covered some of this. It really just helps you give, get those insights, measure performance. Um, you're not going to be, you know, creating campaigns or publishing anything from it. But I do think it's an integral part to any sort of digital marketing uh, effort, just so you know where your time is being spent, what's working, and what's not. Rihanna asks, so you create special events to the admin section and then review the data and reports? Exactly. There are some other ways to create, you know, events and things like that, tagging it. Um, so it's not 100% true, but it's pretty true. You set up that custom event and you'll be ready to go. And, you know, say you, you create the event and you don't look at a report for three months after that, no worries, that information will be there waiting uh, when you sign back in. Now, Alex asks, can you talk a little bit about Google Tag Manager? A Google Tag Manager is something we didn't really mention. Um, a lot of the stuff that you used to need Google Tag Manager for, like creating those custom events, maybe doing some you know, cross-domain measurement, things like that, that's something that has mostly been folded into Google Analytics for. There's still ways to create custom events and some more advanced stuff in Tag Manager, and I would recommend it uh, for that. But on a very basic level, for folks who don't know, Tag Manager is basically saying, hey, instead of installing just this Google Analytics code on the site, maybe there's a whole bunch of information I need to start loading in here and special tracking and stuff like that. Let's just have one thing installed on the site, and then we'll fill that, that Tag Manager, that big bucket, they call them containers, with all the other information there. So it's just a way to centrally manage a lot of uh, inserts like that. Some more coming in here. Um, we have uh, we have multiple websites. Each one is a different property in Google Analytics 4, correct? So with this, um, the answer is it depends. Uh, you can combine multiple websites into one property and one data stream if you'd like, or you can have separate ones. I would usually say like if you're if you have two websites but one is just the blog for your main website, you can bring them together in one property, probably even one data stream. But if you have maybe a couple different initiatives, uh, you know, maybe there's a whole separate website for, you know, an in-person version of the work you do. And then, you know, a separate, you know, arm of the, the organization that handles donation and fundraising or, or online events or stuff like that. Maybe it'd be better to keep them separate because you're not really going to want to see how they interact as much. So depending on your setup, uh, you'll have a lot of customization options, but just know that you don't need to have them separate, but it may be better for you. Um, somebody asks here, uh, can't send monthly uh, reports to non-Gmail addresses in Google Analytics 4. So if you are using Analytics, uh, you are going to need to have a Google account. You can sign up for a Google account with a non-Google email address, I believe, but it's going to be part of the platform. So in order to be invited as a, a viewer or an admin or something like that, they are going to need to have a Google account. And also know if you're setting up an account, um, you can sort of set up like up very often for people who sign up for the uh, um, analytics help, uh, we'll create the account for them and then add them in as admins on the site. And then sort of if, if we get removed later on down the line, 
it doesn't matter as much. Um, so just as long as you have that Google account, you'll be able to invite people uh, from anywhere, basically. Next up, Candy says, do you have guidance or tutorials on setting up the UTM parameters for e email newsletter links? Um, there's a couple of places you could go. Uh, tap, uh, we have our own sort of UTM builder where you just sort of fill out the fields and it'll create a, a tag link for you. Google has the same thing as well. Um, if you're using HubSpot, they have them uh, uh, a UTM builder that directly ties into all the other sort of campaigns and tags that you do in your normal HubSpot work. So there are a lot of areas for the most part, uh, you can even set up your own thing and maybe a Google sheet to automatically generate these. It's just look at the format and adding this extra information onto the end of the links. Those tools, you just paste in your link, type in what you want your campaign name to be, what you want the source and medium to be, and it spits you out a longer link. There are some considerations to go into um, that I'm not gonna go in too deep just for time's sake, just in case anybody else has some questions. Um, but say you have one of these big long links, now instead of slash donate for your URL that maybe you're trying to print, you have this big long one that has question marks and ampersands and underscores and all this. Nobody's gonna be typing all that in. Um, so you're gonna wanna use a thing like a URL shorten, like a bit.ly, or set up a redirect. So say you have, you know, slash uh, giving Tuesday is gonna redirect to, you know, your slash donate with all that information on the end. That can be a great way if you especially need to make that link visible uh, to, to hide all the, the tracking information while still getting the, the benefit of having the tracking information there. For things like links and emails or QR codes, nobody's really gonna be looking at that, that bare link. So you'll be good to just keep it um, long and unruly as it is. Does anybody else have any questions that we can you know, uh, uh, answer for you? We have just a couple minutes left. Oh, I'm seeing some of the chat here. Can constant contact be considered a data stream to add to the property? So this might be a little bit of a nomenclature uh, uh, issue. So data streams are all inside Google Analytics. You will be able to see that, you know, maybe in as a, a campaign or a source, you can see that, hey, these people are coming from our, our constant contact emails. Most often you're gonna see when they click a, a link from, your, from their inbox, it's gonna be marked as email or whatever you set it to. If they click on something from the web version, it's going to be referred from constantcontact.com. Kind of a big long link because it's all unique for the customers. Um, but just with that, I can't say uh, you know constant contact with data stream exactly. But by trying to parse what you might mean, I hope I hope I have a helpful answer for you. Oh, we lost everybody. Nope. Okay, sorry. I ended up must have just stuttered here. Um, the last question we have here is, will we be sending this presentation via email so we can contact? Absolutely. So take a look at the at the, all the links at the end, fill out some of the surveys, shoot us a message. Uh, we'll be happy to help you, uh, you know, get started wherever you are in the process, whether you're looking to, you know, really uh, get things set up from the, uh, from the start, we will help, or if you're looking to develop better landing pages so you can get more insights into some of this, we'll be able to help with that as well. So John, I think that's that's all the questions we have for today. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we thank everyone for coming out today. All right. I hope you folks have a, a wonderful rest of your day.